Apple Pie Accounting Book. Oh my, cried Snow White, we don't have any apples. And I was planning to make a delicious apple pie for dessert. Doc rubbed his belly. Pie, he said, leave it to us. We'll pick you all the apples you want. Why, thank you, Snow White said. I'll need ten apples for the pie. Happy was the first to return. Here you go, he said with a giggle. One apple. Wonderful, Happy, Snow White said. I'll see that you get the very first slice of pie. The next apple came from Sneezy. Chew, he said with a sneeze. I picked it myself. But I think it's, ha, uh, ha, uh, chew, making me sneeze. Thank you, said Snow White. Now I have two apples for the pie. Apple number three came from Doc. Here's a pie for the apple, he said. Uh, I mean, an apple for the pie. Snow White smiled. You can put it on the counter with the other stock, she said. It took Snow White a moment to notice that Bashful had returned. Oh, hello, she said. Did you bring an apple for the pie? Bashful nodded shyly. Here it is. That makes four, Doc said, counting the apples carefully. Okay, okay, Grumpy said, stomping into the kitchen. Here's your darn apple. Apple number five. Thank you so much, Grumpy, Snow White said giving him a kiss. Ugh, yucks, he muttered. It was nothing. Sorry I'm late, Sleepy mumbled, rubbing his eyes. I dozed up under the apple tree for a while. That's quite all right, Snow White said. The important thing is, you've brought us apple number six. Dopey ran into the kitchen. He tripped over the door sill and his apple bounced out of his hand. Look out! Frying, flying fruit! Doc cried. Uh, that is flying fruit. Wonderful, everyone, Snow White said. But we still only have seven apples. I need three more for the pie. Let's go, gang, Doc said. Time to get more apples. Dopey grinned and shook his head. With a flourish, he reached into his left pocket and pulled out an apple. Hooray, Dopey, Snow White cried. That makes eight apples. Hmph, Grumpy said. Doesn't sound so wonderful to me. We're still two apples short. Dopey shook his head again. Then he tugged into his right pocket and pulled out another apple. Nine apples, Happy said with a chuckle. I don't suppose you've got number ten under your hat, do you, Dopey? With a bigger grin than ever, Dopey whipped off his cap. Balanced on his head were not one, but two apples. Number 10, Doc said. And, uh-oh, number 11? That's too many apples. Dopey looked worried, but Snow White smiled. Don't worry, Dopey, she said. This won't go to waste. She bit into the crunchy fruit. I just can't resist a good apple. I know an old lady who swallowed a pie. I know an old lady who swallowed a pie, a Thanksgiving pie, which was really too dry. Perhaps she'll die. I know an old lady who swallowed some cider. That rumbled and mumbled 
and grumbled inside her. She swallowed the cider to moisten the pie, the Thanksgiving pie, which was really too dry. Perhaps she'll die. I know an old lady who swallowed a roll. Just swallowed it whole, the entire roll. She swallowed the roll to go with the cider that rumbled and mumbled and grumbled inside her. She swallowed the cider to moisten the pie, the Thanksgiving pie, which was really too dry. Perhaps she'll die. I know an old lady who swallowed a squash. Oh my gosh, a fat yellow squash. She swallowed the squash to go with the roll. She swallowed the roll to go with the cider that rumbled and mumbled and grumbled inside her. She swallowed the cider to moisten the pie, the Thanksgiving pie, which was really too dry. Perhaps she'll die. I know an old lady who swallowed a salad. She was looking quite pallid from eating that salad. She swallowed the salad to go with the squash. She swallowed the squash to go with the roll. She swallowed the roll to go with the cider that rumbled and mumbled and grumbled inside her. She swallowed the cider to moisten the pie, the Thanksgiving pie, which was really too dry. Perhaps she'll die. I know an old lady who swallowed a turkey. Her future looked murky after that turkey. She swallowed the turkey to go with the salad. She swallowed the salad to go with the squash. She swallowed the squash to go with the roll. She swallowed the roll to go with the cider that rumbled and mumbled and grumbled inside her. She swallowed the cider to moisten the pie, the Thanksgiving pie, which was really too dry. Perhaps she'll die. I know an old lady who swallowed a pot. I kid you not, she swallowed a pot. She swallowed the pot to go with the turkey. She swallowed the turkey to go with the salad. She swallowed the salad to go with the squash. She swallowed the squash to go with the roll. She swallowed the roll to go with the cider that rumbled and mumbled and grumbled inside her. She swallowed the cider to moisten the pie, the Thanksgiving pie, which was really too dry. Perhaps she'll die. I know an old lady who swallowed a cake. Uh, for goodness sake, a ten-layer cake. She swallowed the cake to go with the pot. She swallowed the pot to go with the turkey. She swallowed the turkey to go with the salad. She swallowed the salad to go with the squash. She swallowed the squash to go with the roll. She swallowed the roll to go with the cider that rumbled and mumbled and grumbled inside her. She swallowed the cider to moisten the pie, the Thanksgiving pie, which was really too dry. Perhaps she'll die. I know an old lady who swallowed some bread. Happy Thanksgiving. I'm full, she said. Pooh, the honey cake mix-up. One wonderful morning, when the breeze was scented with new spring blossoms, Winnie the Pooh sat on a log, waiting for Roo. I know I promised to help Roo with something today, said Pooh. I just can't remember what that something is. As Pooh licked some honey off his paw, he said, Now I remember. I promised to help Roo make a honey cake for Kanga's birthday party. 
Just then, Rue arrived, ready to begin pouring and measuring and stirring and baking. The little kangaroo happily bounded inside and watched as Pooh peered into his cupboard. Hmm, said Pooh. We have honey and eggs and butter, but we seem to be missing something. Perhaps we should go ask Rabbit what it is. I know he's baked before. Goodness gracious, said Rabbit, looking in his cookbook. A honey cake is easy to make. All you need is honey, butter, eggs, baking soda and flour. Ah, said Pooh, that's what we're missing, the flour. Pooh was sure that Rabbit meant the kind with petals and leaves. I'd give you the flour, said Rabbit, but I'm all out. That's all right, said Pooh. Rue and I can find it. Thank you for your help, Rabbit. And so, Pooh and Rue strolled into the woods, searching for the perfect flower for Kanga's cake. A little while later, they ran into Piglet. We're looking for a flower, announced Rue excitedly. So was I, said Piglet, and I found a whole bunch of them. He proudly held out a small bouquet. Would you mind showing us where they are? Pooh asked. Not at all, said Piglet. I'll even help you pick some. Pooh and Roo picked some flowers, then went to Pooh's house. Then they mixed them up with the eggs and butter and baking soda and honey and poured the batter into a cake pan. They put the pan in the oven, anxiously opening the door every few minutes to see if the cake was rising. It wasn't. Maybe we used the wrong flour, suggested Rue. I think you're right, Pooh agreed. And so the two friends headed out again to find a different flour for Kanga's cake. It seemed as if they looked at a hundred different flower flowers. Rue especially liked some tiny yellow ones he saw in the grass. Those are buttercups, said Pooh. We don't want to use those, because we already have a cup of butter at home. After a while, Pooh and Rue decided to go see Eeyore. Oh good, Eeyore said. Visitors. Or were you on your way to someplace else? No, said Pooh, we came to see you. We want to get your advice about something. You do? said Eeyore, surprised that anyone would want to ask his advice about anything. Such as what? Flowers, cried Rue. Thistles, actually, said Pooh. How do you think they would taste in a cake? I don't know, said Eeyore. Why don't you taste some for yourself? Eeyore led his friends to a small patch of purple thistles, but when Pooh bent down to pick a flower, he saw that it was covered with prickles. Pooh said, Thistles are sort of prickly, don't you think? I suppose, said Eeyore, but the prickles would give your cake crunch. Pooh imagined the prickly cake the thistles would make. Not wanting to hurt Eeyore's feelings, Pooh said, You know, Eeyore, this is such a lovely batch of thistles that you should have it all to yourself. Rue and I will find another patch. But thank you for all your help. After they left Eeyore, Pooh and Rue bumped into Tigger. Or rather, Tigger bounced into them. What you doing, buddy bear? Trigger asked Pooh. We're looking for the flour to put in Kanga's cake, explained Pooh. Do you know where we could find one? Rue asked hopefully. 
I know where you can find Tigger lilies, said Tigger. Pooh said, you mean tiger lilies, don't you? Well, some folks call them that, said Tigger, frowning. But these tiger lilies have pounds. Any cake you put them in is sure to rise. What do you think, Roo? asked Pooh. Do you want to put a tiger lily in your mama's honey cake? Oh yes, said Roo, jumping up and down with excitement. She'll have the highest, bounciest cake ever. As soon as Pooh and Roo got home, Pooh mixed the tiger lilies with the other ingredients. Pooh let Roo stir for a while, then he poured the mixture into a pan. Before Pooh put the pan in the oven, Roo said, It looks kind of funny. Pooh stared at the lumpy orange mixture. That's because it's not cooked, he said. It will look different once we bake it. But when Pooh took the pan out of the oven, nothing had changed. Oh my, said Pooh. This doesn't look like a cake at all. It looks like carrot soup. Roo peered at the goo. What did we do wrong? He asked in a worried voice. I think we should go see Rabbit again, said Pooh. He'll know how to fix it. Once Rabbit saw the soupy mixture, he said, Oh, Pooh, you forgot the flour. No, I didn't, said Pooh. No, we didn't, echoed Roo. Then you mustn't have used the white kind, Rabbit insisted. Oh, said Pooh. I see. But he wasn't quite sure that he did. Don't worry, Roo, said Pooh. We still have a few hours until Kanga's party. We'll find a white flower in no time. As they were searching, Owl flew overhead. Hello, Owl, said Pooh. Do you know where we could find a white flower? Would a white rose do? Owl asked. Christopher Robin has some roses in his garden. He might have a white one. That would be splendid, said Pooh. Yes, it would, said Owl, sitting on a branch. By the way, did I ever tell you about my great aunt Rose? Well, it really is quite fascinating how... As Owl chatted on, Roo and Pooh slipped away. A while later, they found Christopher Robin, who had been out back in his garden. I was wondering, said Pooh, do you have a white flower to put in Kanga's cake? We already have the other ingredients. <sighs> Silly old bear, said Christopher Robin. You need white baking flour, not a white flower with petals and a stem. I do, said Pooh. My mother has some in a tin, said the boy. I'll get it for you. While Christopher Robin was getting the flower, Pooh and Roo admired the roses. They stuck their noses into the blossoms, breathing in their sweet scent. Mmm, said Roo. They smell like Mama. Soon Christopher Robin appeared with the tin. As Pooh stared at the white flower inside, Christopher Robin said, It's okay, Pooh. It's easy to make a mistake especially with words that sound the same. You're right, said Pooh. Flower and flower. <laughs> no wonder I got confused. You had a good idea, though, said Christopher Robin. I'm sure Kanga would love to receive some flowers for her birthday. Here, why don't you take her these roses? Then you can give her a bouquet and a cake. That afternoon, Pooh and Roo used the flower Christopher Robin had given them to make a wonderful, tall, golden honey cake. 
When Pooh took the cake out of the oven, Roo breathed deeply and said, It sure smells as good as a flower. Later that afternoon, at the party in the woods, Roo gave the honey cake and the bouquet of roses to his mother. Thank you, Roo, said Kanga. What wonderful presents these are. And to think that you and Pooh made the cake all by yourselves. Why, you really are quite a pair. Pooh began to imagine himself and Roo as big green pears. He must have looked confused because Christopher Robin said, Not that kind of pear, Pooh. Kanga meant the kind of pear that means two. Pooh and Roo and Christopher Robin giggled just a little, then sat down to eat big delicious slices of Kanga's honey cake with their friends. Ariel's Light Up Cake Ariel, the little mermaid, peeked out at the family on the beach. The little girl clapped as her parents held out a cake with lights on it. Look, Flander, Ariel whispered to her friend. It's like magic. Happy birthday, darling, the mother said. Now make a wish. To Ariel's surprise, the little girl blew out the magic lights. We have to ask Scuttle about this, Ariel told Flander. Maybe we could use those magic lights for Daddy's birthday. Scuttle the seagull knew all about the magic lights. Oh, humans call those, er, uh, H-sticks, he said. They would look beautiful on Daddy's cake, Scuttle. Do you think you could get some H-sticks for me? Ariel asked. Scuttle promised to try. After a little while, he came back with two H-sticks and two things that looked like rocks. Scuttle tapped the rocks. You use these babies to light the age sticks. Just hit one against the other. Back home, when Ariel tried to light the age sticks underwater, nothing happened. I guess this only works above the sea, Ariel said sadly. Above the sea, the shout of Sebastian, the court composer, made Ariel and Flounder jump. Ariel, have you been above the sea again? Oh, Sebastian, Ariel said. I wanted a surprise for Daddy's birthday, but now it won't work. Ariel, said Sebastian. The king hates anything from above the sea. If he saw these human things, he would be breached forever. Sebastian smiled, but then at least I'd be able to find you for your singing lessons. Ariel brightened. Find them. That's just what we'll do. Thanks, Sebastian. Where are we going, Ariel? Flander asked. Ariel wasn't sure, but when she saw flashes of blue and red lights in the distance, she got an idea. Jeweled squids, Flander, that's it! Ariel swam as fast as she could. Ariel, wait up, Flander called. Ariel found three jeweled squids playing light and go seek in the seaweed. They were happy to help with King Triton's birthday. The royal chef was not happy at all with the jeweled squids. They kept playing red light, blue light in his pantry. They bumped bowls and dumped dishes, glowing all the while. Out! Out! came the chef's shout. The jeweled squids giggled as they swam away. Oh, Flander, now I don't have any lights for Daddy's party. Don't worry, Ariel, said Flander. Look, I see another light. Flander swam right up to the light. It seemed to be floating all by itself above some rocks. Ariel, look, it's... Snap! A set of long sharp teeth clicked shut 
just in front of Flander. An anglerfish was attached to the light. Ariel, help! Flander yelled. He's going to eat me! Ariel turned to the anglerfish. Stop picking on others, she said. The anglerfish started to cry. Oh, I just wanted to play, the anglerfish sniffed. I can't make any friends because of these teeth. Not if you keep snapping them, Ariel scolded. Then she smiled. But I bet you could make a lot of friends with that light. Really? the anglerfish said. Do you think so? I know so, Ariel smiled. Are there any other anglerfish who might want to make friends? That night, the anglerfish held their lights high. They swam in with Ariel as she gave King Triton his cake. Thank you, Ariel, King Triton said. This is the brightest birthday I've ever had. Then he turned to the anglerfish. And thank you for helping to make it that way. You see, Ariel, Sebastian whispered, things are better under the sea. Ariel smiled. The anglerfish's lights were beautiful, almost as beautiful as the H sticks above the sea.